Chairman Jazzco. Okay, that's good. Well, I appreciate it. And yeah, I think that's it for now, so thanks. And you know, there was one other question on top of my mind, but I can't remember it right now. Well, can you say that? You know, the par still looks good. Chairman Jasco. Yeah, okay. Wiggins. That's always an important thing. Chairman Jasco. Okay. Wiggins. The par looks good. And we'll let you know what the NARC, what the President's run results in California and Hawaii and those places. We'll make sure you know that. Jasco. Okay, good. Wiggins. And well then, we'll have to. And then you have this blank area here that we may never know. TEPCO is injecting fresh water into units 1, 2, and 3 and has transitioned to temporary electric pumps for injection in all three units. Actions are underway to pump water from flooded turbine building basements into condensers and other tanks. TEPCO plans to inject water into Unit 1 spent fuel pool from cement pumper truck on 30 of March. Lighting returned to the Unit 4 control room. Currently no acts due to dose rates. TEPCO is considering spraying zeolite on the outside and interior of the RX buildings in an effort to minimize resuspension of fission products in the air but having difficulty planning application due to the elevated dose rates. Highly radioactive water, approximately 100 rem an hour, found in a trench pipe cable chase outside of Unit 2. Source of the water unclear. TEPCO stated the water is not flowing into the ocean. Though the water will overflow this trench if it rises about 1 meter. Trench is 4 meters deep. There is water in the trenches outside of Units 1 and 3 as well. Actions have been taken or in progress to preclude contaminated water in trenches from reaching the ocean. We have an important tie note from Harold McLeavy. Items to note. Unit 2 containment may be in better shape than previously expected, despite the press reporting. U4 situation is deteriorating. Spent fuel pool water inventory is lost. Japanese military is planning to drop seawater over Unit 3 and probably Unit 4 yesterday, but this plan was abandoned due to the high dose rates. The dose rates around Unit 4 make entry impossible at this time. The skeleton crew of 50 that had been held on site, minus the 750 workers that were evacuated, was moved off site approximately 0.5 miles away due to high dose concerns. As of 0600 Central Time this morning, Japanese media reported from the NPR indicated that the crew might not yet be back on site. The evacuation area around the Fukushima Daini plant has been expanded to 20 kilometers. Tom Andrews Sure was a lot of conflicting and misleading information coming out of Japan on the status of these sites. Sad to say but this sounds like one of those worst case scenarios we have practiced for years. Prolonged station blackout. Remember saying how much redundancy we have to prevent from this happening. Wonder what knee jerk regulatory reaction will evolve from this. Wonder if this will make it too expensive for some of the plants to operate due to the cost of required modifications. Knowing how bad the situation is in Japan trying to make the best of a bad situation, are we getting any data from Japan that we can use later for training? Do we know who was dispatched to Japan from the NRC? Based on the source term and the meteorological considerations, it is assumed that the worst probable nuclear incident at an industrial facility is a fire a MOX fire that could disperse radioactive material into the atmosphere, yielding a time integrated concentration of radionuclides at a nearby populated area as follows. Now in this worst case scenario, you really don't have them mentioning the ocean too much because they know the water sh shields some of the radioactivity, but ultimately that's going to be end up being the worst case scenario is the ocean being totally radiated. Dan Dorman, it's it's interesting to me you're focusing on that loop oil fire because Jim, Jim, and when we were talking this morning we're focused on uniform explosion but I'm fuzzy in my recollection of which came first. 
Larry Camper. Well, I I think we're saying we're skeptical that it was a lube oil fire. We know it wasn't a lube oil fire. We know that. They can take that off the table. Mr. Skeen and Chuck, this Dave Skeen, that's my concern. It's their plan. As Marty says, what their long-term plan is to get plant equipment restored. I don't see how they're going to do that. They've a pump or two and found out that their pumps are bad. Mr. Casto, yes, we've known that for some time. Just a quick update based on what we heard so far. Just a couple caveats and general info. As Nick indicated in his email, if you get any requests for info or status, forward them to the HOO. That's why the agency will have one voice. It's frustrating, but we have very little factual info as an agency. What we've been getting has been through the State Department. The Japanese regulatory body is very mature, sophisticated, and technically competent. As is the Japanese industry, so the NRC is being very careful to not interfere or imply that they are not equipped to handle the reactor events. The NRC has sent two people over with the potential to send more. The plants appear to have survived the earthquake pretty well, but lost the EDG fuel oil supplies. Therefore, complete station blackout situation when the tsunami hit. EDG fuel oil tanks were above ground design. Repeat a first bullet. If you get any inquiries, send them to the HOO. The site has six reactors. Three were operating and the other three were shut down for maintenance at the time of the earthquake for the operating units. Unit 1, similar design to the Dresden with no ISO condenser. Core damage is likely. Core coverage is uncertain. Injecting borated seawater to the core but have now lost that capability. Hydrogen explosion and have lost secondary containment but believe primary containment is intact. Venting fission product daughters off site but prevailing winds are out to sea. Unit 2 similar design to Quad City in the best very relative term shape of the three previously operating reactors were operating on RCIC but that is now lost. Primary and secondary containment believed intact. However, anticipate that a hydrogen explosion is imminent. Unit 3 similar design to the Quad City. Hydrogen explosion yesterday would breach a secondary containment, injecting seawater into the core, boiling in the spent fuel pools, feeding is able with the seawater. I'll provide more tomorrow if we can get it. Casto, I would just ask for their recommendations, you know. They've got all the science. They have these codes that can run this event. They have run this event. They ran it for Peach Bottom. They ran this event for a number of sites. And you know, you may just want to reach out. And we may just want to reach out and ask them what their recommendations are based on Melkor. And I don't know. I can't remember all those code names, but there's a lot of different ones. Do they have recommendations about the crust that forms and keeping water on it? And keeping the right pH and all that stuff? And you know, if we end up with a molten core, and then you talk about the time for the concrete to disassociate, you know, that new rag says it's a couple of inches an hour, you know. And of course, that Mark 1 containment is the worst one of all the containments we have. And it's literally, you know, this new rag tells you that in a station blackout, you're going to lose containment. There's no doubt about it. Report seems to indicate immediate evacuation was appropriate. PMT staff contacted the IAEA and were told that no additional information would be forthcoming. PMT plans to make follow-up calls with the IAEA. HHS indicated that KI would be shipped out to Japan on April 1st. A Japanese newspaper has reported the simulations were done more than 30 years ago at Oak Ridge National Laboratory that reasonably matched conditions at the Fukushima nuclear plant based on a loss of power at the Browns Ferry nuclear plant.
Subject action, identify fourth wave in NRC staff to Japan. ODs and RAS, there's a discussion of potentially sending an additional six or staff to Japan. These individuals would likely depart the US with a return date of around April 27. Specifically, Chuck is looking for four individuals with severe accident experience, lots of EOP, SAMG experience. He is looking for two protective measure staffs, specifically an ingestion pathway person and a plume person. Fukushima Daiichi Japanese national government instructed evacuation for local residents within 20 km radius of the site boundary and sheltering in place out to 30 km for residents who stayed behind. The IAEA confirms a no-fly zone out to 30 km around the Fukushima Daiichi plant. There have been no updates to protective actions. Japanese authorities have changed the classification of the event from a level 4 to a level 5 accident with wider consequences on the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale. NHK Media reports on March 17 stated that the helicopter crews dumping water on Unit 3 reactor building reported dose rates at 375 rems an hour at 300 feet above the building. Earthquake Tsunami Status Update March 18 An array of fire trucks have been deployed at the site and appear to be supplying spraying water over Unit 3. All available information indicates that the majority of releases from the Fukushima site have been carried out to sea by the prevailing winds. Forecast meteorological data for the 24 hour period until 2000 EDT on March 18 indicates wind heads offshore from northwest westerly. No, we might be hearing something from TEPCO or getting stuff from NISA, and industry might have a more direct route. So we'll see that where that comes up. Snyder? Jim, this is Mike Snyder. Could you please let me know the dose rates that you said that were lower at the gate? Do you have what those lower rates are on that? Wiggins? All I have is what NIA is reporting. It's very important to understand that this is from NIA. I'll just read you this paragraph about it. NIA reports that the dose rates around units 3 and 4 are reducing. It was 40 rem per hour. It now is 15 rem per hour around the units immediately. Dose rates around 5 and 6 are about 100 mil rem an hour. Dose rates near the power block range from 1 to 5 rem an hour. The site's access gate was reading 60 millirems an hour, which is about 4,000 feet from the plant. Winds continue to blow from the northwest, so the plume is going up to sea. So as we said, that's swinging around. A dose rate was recorded to be 12 millirem an hour at 1 fifth kilometer inland from the plant. All the dose rates 20 to 40. My case. Right. So these at 1,000 feet, so you have to calculate, well, what would it be at ground level? And then they're comparing this with the data they have. Some of these elevated levels may be the release is ongoing. Unknown participant. True, but you're getting 20 to 30. My case. Milliram. Unknown participant. Milliram. It's real data. Case. Right. At 1,000 feet. That's 1,000 feet, but that could be a plume at 800 feet that you're seeing. My case. The detectors are seeing whatever is below it. It could be the shine from the plume. Case. Could be the shine from the plume. Unknown participant. True. Brian McDermott. Okay. Unknown participant. Brian, from my understanding, Noah actually gave a... They stated a 19 mile radioactive cloud is moving down the Japanese coast. McDermott, down the Japanese coast? Unknown participant, where is that coming from? Yes, we don't know. That's why I called you as soon as I was notified and said get this to the public affairs. And we'll try to head this off at the pass, but I don't know what's behind it.